السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Okay, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are all enjoying your time and you are all fine. Today we start our fourth uh, lecture and in today's lecture we start a new unit uh, which is unit 2. In today's lecture we'll read the second story okay the reading passage and then I'll explain and read the words and idioms list and explain some of these you know words or idioms if they need to be uh, explained more but they are all uh, put in simplified English and some are given with examples. So, our second story on page 17. Page 17. The title of this story is called, or it is, Lessons from the Farm. Okay? Again here, the story is narrated, is told, يعني, by the first person point of view first person narrator that means the narrator or the teller of the story here is using the I point of view saying I have I had I spent okay my cousins I learned okay so the narrator again here is a participant in the story okay is part of the events part of the story and we come uh, to the end of the story and we don't really know whether the storyteller or the narrator is a male or female a boy or a girl so it could be either okay so just for you to know these general things before we start reading the story okay lessons from the farm it's about uh, the storyteller and telling his uh, story and the lessons that he learned while you know working uh, on a farm with his uncle or with his cousin uh, briefly he, he talks about the narrator he or she talks about three three lessons that he learned okay three lessons and on uh, he explains each lesson separately so you have to keep this in mind okay on we go okay we start lessons from the farm I had never really lived on a farm but my brother's uncle John and uh, had a farm so I spent time there like all other children in the family the farm was just a few miles from town so we could ride our bicycles there. Aunt Wanda, my cousins, and the hard help all like children. So we felt welcome there. Some very interesting things happened on the farm. I learned a lot about life and a lot about people there. Next paragraph here. I learned about having a job and motivation this is the first lesson that the narrator learned again I learned about having a job and motivation as we grow, grew older we were asked if we wanted to work on the farm one job that we all liked was picking beans Uncle John planted several acres of green beans every spring and in the middle of July, the beans were ready to begin picking. He drove his yellow truck to town every morning and picked up his bean pickers. He had two stops, one at the park and one closer to our house. At seven in the morning, we children would be ready. We had our buckets and paper sacks with our lunches. We wore light colored long sleeved shirts. Why? 
and they had we had big straw hats too to protect our heads from the sun we were off to earn money for special things that we wanted next paragraph on line 25 picking beans was not hard work each person took one row knelt on a folded burlap sack and pushed back the leaves we were supposed to pluck the long green beans and put them in our pails when a bucket was full we emptied the beans into big clean burlap sacks we called these bags gunny sacks next page page 18 A gunny sack could hold a gunny sack could hold about 70 pounds of beans. Most days we children each picked one bag full. We got paid for this work. Uncle John weighed the sacks at the end of the day. We he deducted two pounds for the weight of the sack. Aunt Wanda figured out how much we had earned and paid us three cents a pound. Helen Miller was an adult who came with us sometimes. Mrs. Miller always picked more than 100 pounds. Some days she picked more than 200 pounds of beans. She didn't play, however. My brothers always played and they never got they never got more than two dollars for the beans they picked. One day I chose a row next to Mrs. Miller's. I tried to work as fast as she did. That year I earned money for clothes and a gold wristwatch. It was good to separate work and play. We earned money and so did Uncle John. Every evening Uncle, Uncle John took us back to town. Then he took the bags full of beans to a canning factory across the river. Next paragraph. One, one very hot day at lunchtime I learned another lesson. Okay, this is the second lesson that the narrator is telling us about. One day, sorry, one very hot day at lunchtime, I learned another lesson. Uncle John suggested that we take a rest. The sun was simply too strong for us to stay in the fields at high noon. My cousin Piggy and I went for a walk. Everything seemed quiet as we walked into the cool shady woods. We found a grassy place under a tree stretched out and fell sound asleep. I woke up suddenly. Someone was looking at me. I could feel eyes on me. I looked up and so no one. I sat up and suddenly there was a great halablu. Piggy woke up too. And we realized that a flock of 100 turkeys or more surrounded us. They wanted to be cool too. When we woke up, they were frightened. They were all raising their necks and gobble gobbling at us. The den was terrifying. Next page. Page 19. Next page. Piggy. Okay. Piggy started to cry. It was frightening. 
all those turkeys? I don't know why, but I made a sound in response. I forced air out of my lungs and let my tongue make a flapping brrrr sound. The turkeys suddenly all became quiet and settled down into the grass. Piggy got to her feet and so did I. We needed to escape from the turkeys, from all the turkeys. I continued making the brrrr whirring sound. And the turkeys stayed down. When I stopped, they started gobbling again. Later, I learned that turkeys naturally fear hawks. And the whirr, the whirring sound, was like the sound of hawk swings. Piggy laughed about my knowing how to talk to turkeys. It was an insight into learning to speak foreign languages. Next paragraph, which is the third lesson that we are being told or that the narrator tells us about. This is lesson number three. Okay. There was one other important lesson that I learned on the farm. Okay, this is lesson number three. It was a warm Saturday morning in autumn. The fall colors were bright on the trees. My brother Ted and I had ridden our bicycles out to the farm to spend the day. We would help if we could. Suddenly, okay, suddenly the sky grew dark and the wind began to blow. It was obvious to us all that there was going to be a thunderstorm. Uncle John was leading his horses into their stalls in the barn. He called to us to help he called to us to help get the animals into the barn. Ted and I took up the sticks. Next paragraph. We ran to the meadow and started to move the small herd of cows toward the barn. The cows went willingly into the safety of the large building. All the cows, except for one yearling, that is, went peacefully into the barn. This young animal, the yearling, this young animal, was stubbornly refusing to go in. Uncle John and Dan, his adult son, were both pulling on the rope around the calf's neck. Yearling, and calves, they were yearling. And the animal's hooves were firmly planted in the earth ten feet from the door of the barn. Nothing, it seemed, would get that animal into the barn. Next page, and last paragraph, okay, Ted watched the, uh, then asked, Ted watched and then asked, can I try Uncle John and Dan looked at him. Ted was only 12 years old. He was tall for his age. But he was certainly not as strong as strong as Uncle John and Dan. Uncle John laughed and said, Okay, Teddy, have a go at it. He threw the rope to Ted, who did not take it. Instead, Ted pulled hard on the tail of the cow and the animal bolted straight into the barn. I learned that common sense is not common. I also learned I also learned that it is good to stop and think about something difficult to do. Sometimes 
it is better to use one's brain instead of one's bone. Okay, this is the uh, story uh, about uh, the storyteller and his uncle and aunt and his uh, brother and the three lessons that he learned while having a job or while working on uh, the farm of his uncle. Okay, so if uh, we go back uh, for just some more revision uh, to the reading passage, okay, here we talk about, as we uh, have just said, okay, the storyteller is telling us uh, his story while working on a farm and he tells us uh, the first you know job uh, and his experience or her experience in picking beans and how his uncle used to go and you know uh, find or you know pick up the bean uh, pickers and the children including the children and put them in the truck in his yellow truck and take them to the farm to his farm and you know uh, there are words the difficult words are already you know explained for you in the words and idioms list we go to this part of the uh, unit words and idioms list okay here is the beginning of the list okay words and idiom list and idioms list sorry uh, first one is an acre, okay, as a noun. Acre, as a noun, is what is an acre? It's a kind of or a type of measurement of land, okay. زي ما سموها بعض في بعض الدول اللي هو زي الفدان مثلاً, okay, which is about أو الدنو, okay, but here it's called the acre, okay, uh, a measurement of land which is about 2.5. I mean, sorry, uh, 2.5 acres equals what? One hectare, which is about four thousand four hundred uh, squared meters. Okay, an acre makes four thousand and forty-seven squared meters. Two, an adult, an adult. What is an adult? An adult is a person over the age of eighteen. An adult is a person over the age of eighteen. الشخص الكبير اللي هو الراشد يعني. Autumn okay, اللي هو the season of the year between summer and winter it's called also what? Fall it is harvest time in some countries okay autumn or fall fall is more used in the in the United States okay, or in uh, the American English autumn is more used in the British English Autumn, fall, okay, the word kharif. Four, to bolt, to run suddenly, to dash forward. To bolt, to run suddenly, and dash forward, okay. Brawn, or strength. Strength, from strong, strong, noun is strength. Brawn, strength. Al quwa. A bucket, there are different, you know, uh, meanings of this word, and you have them in the story. A bucket, is a container, a kind of a container, with a handle for carrying water or other things. Okay, like what we call in Arabic, it was satan. Okay, a bucket, or a pail. Perla, perla, number seven. Perla, perla, is it's an uncountable noun. Yeah, that means, we can't say, uh, perlaps because it's non count now it's a non count now it is what it's a type of a strong thick coarse coarse yani rough cloth made from 
هم اور جوت اوكي اللي هو يعني بالعربي نسميه الخيش يعني تقريبا ما يقابل الخيش اللي هو او الكيس الخيش مصنوع من الالياف من الفايبرز اوكي الفايبر الخشن اوكي بيرلا ايت ايت ا كانينج فاكتوري ا كانينج فاكتوري A canning factory is a noun. It's a place where food is saved and put into cans. Okay? A place where food is saved and put into cans. اللي هو مصنع التعليم. تبع الخضار اللي بي بي بلقطوها في الموسم تبع تلقية الفاصوليا أو اللي تكلم عنها في القطع. To deduct. To deduct means what? To subtract. To take away, okay, like what say minus, to take out, okay, to take away, to subtract, deduct, يعني يخصم من. Earn, to gain, to get, to work for money, to do a job and be paid for it. To work for money, to do a job and be paid for it. To earn, to gain. Twelve to feel welcome. This is an idiom. Okay, feel welcome to understand that one can visit and know that people are glad to show it. Okay, to feel welcome. Okay, to understand that one can visit and know that people are glad to show it. A flap, thirteen. A flap to move like a bird's wing, to flutter. To move like a bird's wing, to flutter. Fourteen. A flock, noun, a number of birds or sheep as a group. A number of group of birds or sheep group. Grassy from grass, grass, grassy. يعني an area that is covered with grass. Okay, an area, a piece of land covered with grass. Grassy. Sixteen. A hawk. Again, now, okay, a large bird that eats other birds and small animals. A hawk, لو سمو سكر أو الباز. A hawk, it's a large bird that eats other birds and small animals. Seventeen, a herd. It's again now a number of animals, such as cows, horses, okay. Uh, together as a group, so it's a group of animals like horses, cows, okay, a herd. Eighteen, hind noon, okay, again, this is idiom, high noon. That means what? The hottest time of the day between 12 and 2 p.m. High noon, okay, high noon. The hottest time of the day between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. 19. This is an idiom. This is important. Okay. The hired help. The hired help. Okay. Who are the helpers? Yani the person or people who are paid to work on a farm. Okay. Umal. يستقدم للمساعدة مقابل أجر. Hired help. Hired help. It's a noun and it's idiom. Together يعني. Idiom means the, the two words go together as one يعني uh, phrase as a phrase together. Hired help. Sorry. Hired help. Twenty. A hoof. 
and plural is hooves. Hoof and hooves. Twenty, a hoof. That is what? What is a hoof? The hard, split foot of a cow, horse, or sheep. Plural ish? Hooves. Jama'a. Hooves. Uli ish? Al hafr. Hafr al hayawan. Twenty one. Halabulo. Halabulo. Okay, which is what? It's the din. Yan ish din. Halabulo. Same meaning. Halabulo. Din. A lot of noise caused by people or animals. Okay, the noise. The noise that is made by people or animals. Halabulo. Which is a din. This is den number 10. Den. I hope that we did not, you know, skip this one. Den. Number 10, please. Back to number 10. 10 is a den, which is a loud and unpleasant sound. Okay. Then back to number uh, 21. Halabulo. A den. A lot of noise caused by people and, or animals. 21. An insight. Noun. Insight. Which is what? A sudden understanding of facts. A sudden understanding of facts. يعني معرفة حقيقة. يعني بطريقة غير متوقعة أو مفاجئة. شيء ما كنت تعرفه من قبل. 23 to kneel on a verb to to kneel verb يعني to go down on one's knee or on one's knees sorry and settle there knees okay knees what do you mean by knees أو a knee اللي هو ايش الركب okay to kneel to go down on your knees okay يركع يعني أو on your knees sorry to kneel to go on one's knees that means to go on one's knees يعني أنه يركب على ركب 24 a lung noun okay a lung one of what one of two holding body organs okay one of the two air holding body organs لما إيش lungs ها huh? lungs الرئة Lungs, reattain. Lung, one lung, rea. A middle, 25. 25. A field of grass where animals can eat the grass. Middle. Okay? A field of grass. They will say, Zayl Marja, Zayl Sahel, Al Mukhdar, okay? Al Malik, Al Ushab, La Lal Hayawana, Tir Taufi. Next page. Next page, page 22. Motivation. So this is a non count noun. يعني, as I just said before, when we say non count, that means you cannot use in a plural form. You cannot use in a plural form. You can't say يعني, motivations. Wrong. Motivation, non count noun. We just use it in its singular form. So that's why it is called non-count noun. And I gave uh, examples on that uh, previously, uh, in previous lectures. Motivation, a goal. A reason for doing something. A goal. Motivation, a goal. A reason for doing something. Al-hafiz, muharrad ala amal shay, al-hadaf. Obvious. Clearly understood. Obvious. Yeah, something clear. Obvious? Clear. Obvious. Clear. This is an adjective. Sifa. 28. Appeal. Appeal. Which is another word for bucket. Appeal. A bucket. Which is what? A container for carrying water. Nafs ma'ana bucket. Marat ma'ana. Li'ish. 
كمان معنى ثاني لك كلمة باكت سطل planted planted as an adjective unmoving stable okay if something is planted in its place or an animal or a place that means stable not moving planted unmoving stable يعني fixed in its place to pluck next number 30 to pluck as a verb to pick to pluck to pick to pull off okay to pluck to pluck okay to pick or to pull off to pluck okay a sack okay sort of a bag kind of a bag okay a piece of a cloth that is sewn so that it can hold goods so that it can hold goods or it can be a paper that is folded and glued to hold items a sack either يعني made of a piece of a cloth or made of paper اللي هو الكيس اما من ورق او من قماش او قماش نعم next 32 32 to stretch out as an idiom verb here to to stretch out يعني to stretch out okay to lie down down and prepare to rest or sleep okay to stretch out just to lie down to get ready to sleep or to just to stretch to stretch out preparing يعني someone's يعني to prepare to prepare yourself for a rest or for a sleep to stretch out stop only stop only to family without listening to reason this is an adverb because it ends in ly ly فيها عندها it ends in ly تنتهي ب ly فغالبا تكون ايش adverb زي بالعربي نسمي الحال اوكي تقريبا family without listening to reason اوكي يعني سوندلي يعني بعند عند يعني العمل شيء بعند ب ب بدون ما يسمع لأي أحد أو يستجيب لا لأي نداء أو لا يستجيب لأي أحد في في الحركة زي ما صار مع الكار في القصة اللي هو العجل الصغير ما رضي يتحرك فكان عنيد معند ما رضي يتحرك ويخش على على المخزن أو على الصبر تبع البقر 33 next اللي هو 34 sorry to surround to surround to be on all sides with something in the middle okay to surround next 35 a thunderstorm a thunderstorm ليش a rainstorm with thunder and lightning okay thunderstorm a rainstorm with thunder and lightning يعني عاصفة عاصفة عادية تيجي مع بيجي معها المطر والبرق اوكي لايتنينج اللي هو البرق اوكي a thunderstorm a rainstorm with thunder and lightning 36 the one before the last a whirring sound this is an idiom again whirring sound ليش soft sound of an engine or birds wings moving اوكي يعني يعني this whirring sound is similar to Uh, the engine uh, to the engine or birds wings moving <laughs> last 37 a yearling what is a yearling it's an animal that is a year old oh an adolescent animal and a very young animal okay an animal that is a year old or an adolescent animal okay Uh, this is all for today and here we finish re- uh, the story and the uh, the words and the idioms uh, that are supposed to be new to you or mostly are new to you with the meanings so you have to please read the story or the reading passage again and again to understand uh, the details so you can 
answer the questions on the on this story on the next pages. So in the next lecture we discuss and we uh, answer the exercise on the on the story. So for next time, please you read the story as many times as possible. The more you read, the more you understand. Without reading the story and understanding it, you cannot go to the exercises. Okay, because the exercises uh, ask about specific details in the story. So you have to read the story. Okay, in case of any difficult word, please you refer to your dictionaries. You have to have uh, good dictionaries with you. Okay, uh, so for next time, for next class, we please uh, prepare, you know, uh, the exercises on page 22, the understanding sequence, and give possible answers and then we do it together uh, part A and then part B on page 23 okay and then part C again on page 23 and then uh, which is uh, very important oops you are answering questions about the story page 24 page 24 okay so at least do this for the next time and then uh, we'll do them again together but just to check your answers with me and make sure that we are doing them all right thank you very much for being with me today and see you very soon in another lecture goodbye everybody